What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be customizing and modding the Razer Huntsman Mini keyboard. This is the new and improved linear switch version with those silicone dampeners on the inside. And you know, this keyboard has been very well received overall, it's very popular already, but there have been some complaints. So in this video, we're going to take it apart and do some mods to make it better. If you want to check it out, I'll have the stuff we're going to be using in the description down below. And obviously, you know, since we're doing modifications, this is completely up to you. I'm not responsible if you completely f it up. Everything we're gonna do is like a beginner to slightly intermediate level, so you shouldn't have any issues here. So to take it apart, don't worry, it's not too complicated or anything. There are 13 screws in total you'll have to remove when able to take off the top plate. Don't lose these, obviously. But once they're all out, don't just rip it apart at this point because underneath you're gonna have to be careful. There is some wiring going on that we're gonna have to disassemble. My recommendation is to open it from the top side down so it's easier to work with those cables there. On the bottom housing, there's a flat ribbon cable, and it's just held in by this plastic little lever. You flip that up and the ribbon will slide out. And then for the red, black, and white cable, just carefully pry that out. Okay, so first up for our dampening foam, this is gonna be probably the most important part of this whole modification. This is literally arts and crafts foam. It's called EVA foam, I think it was like $10. This is gonna work perfectly for dampening the bottom housing. The mini is roughly 11 and a half by four inches in size. So just cut a rectangular piece relative to that. You can trim it down after if it's not perfect. But since it's foam, it's gonna be really easy to, you know, just make it fit inside. This I believe is the two millimeter thickness. I would recommend either the two or the one millimeter only. And if you just lay the foam on the top and press down, what it's gonna do is leave an imprint of the exact size you're gonna need to cut, as well as where all the mounting posts are for the screws. Then from there, you can just use scissors to poke through the foam so that the uh, the mounting posts stick through. Cut a little area for the cables to route through. Then once you press it down into the case, you should be good to go. The dampener is gonna make a big difference. What this is gonna do is help absorb any extra pinging and those vibrations on the bottom of the plastic housing. You'll hear it when we do a sound test comparison in a bit, so hold tight. Okay, so next up is gonna be optional, I'll admit, because Razer already does factory lube their switches on the new linear versions, but we're gonna be applying a dry lube with WD-40 to just make them even smoother. We're pretty much just doubling down what they already did. So Razer claims they do factory lube their switches, and in my full review, we took them completely apart and inspected them. I couldn't see any lube inside, but it would make sense that they're using a dry lube like this because if it were a liquid lubricant like Crytox, for example, it would probably trip and cause interference with the optical sensors. So we're going with the dry spray lube. To do this efficiently, pop out all the switches from the PCB. Yes, since they're not soldered in, you could pop them in and out with no issues. You will have to apply some force though, just a little heads up. Now the spray does come out pretty quickly and forcefully here, so I recommend using a piece of tape or something to cover part of the nozzle so you get a smaller stream. And then just apply a little bit under the switch along the spring. Like I said, since there's no way to really deconstruct the switch without breaking it, the easiest way to get the lube inside is to press down slightly so you can see the spring under the switch, then just give it a little skeet skeet. You barely want any spray to get in. I would recommend doing this in a controlled spot because this gets messy. Also smells like one of those haunted house attractions. You know when you go in and it's just like that fog machine smell? Yeah, 100% smells like this. Now next up for the stabilizers, we're gonna give it just a little bit of TLC to hopefully eliminate some of that rattle. And they don't use traditional you know, stabilizers on their keyboard, so it's gonna be a little bit different. Here we're gonna apply some Crytox lube to where they snap into place and where the wire itself touches. You can just use the WD-40 if you don't wanna actually pick up something like Crytox. But we're gonna be doing this for the space bar, the shift, backspace, and enter keys. We're gonna apply lube on the top and bottom of the wire inside, as well as just a slight dab on the plastic mount as well. Additionally, we're gonna add the Band-Aid mod underneath the stabilizer mount, just for shits and gigs, as well as underneath the PCB where the wire is. This will honestly just add another layer of padding to eliminate any micro vibrations and resonance that it may cause. The bar under the PCB doesn't ever move, but again, just that extra layer here to absorb the vibrations won't hurt. And you can use a Band-Aid to cut it up into small strips, that's why they call it the Band-Aid mod, um, or, like I use, some medical tape. Now with the internal mods out of the way, you want to go back and completely reassemble the keyboard, go through the tedious task of putting back in every single switch. For the ribbon cable, literally just place it right back to where it was with the little metallic connectors facing down. You just slide it in and then close back that plastic lever to secure it into place, and just plug back in that tiny 3-pin connector. 
Then when it comes to putting the screws back in, you're gonna have to apply some force and kind of like sandwich it down because of the foam there. Naturally, it's just gonna cause some resistance, but again, since it is foam, if you just put some force on it when you're screwing it down, it will just naturally condense. Now next, one of the more common questions that I saw in the review is people wanted to know if they could use their own keycap set on this to customize it. Mainly the pudding keycaps, got a lot of questions about those. And since it doesn't look like a traditional stem, people don't know if it's compatible or not. But yes, since we do have that cherry style stem in the middle, you can use whatever keycaps you want. GMK, PBT, ABS, DSA, SA, XDA, ABC, XYZ, BOOB, Okay, that's the end of the bit. So yes, you can use them because we not only have a standard bottom row on the mini, but the optical switches still have that cross stem for mounting the caps. I did show off Razer's very own PBT keycaps in my actual review, but I get why people you know, are obsessed with the putting keycaps with the RGB shine through. It can definitely make it look nice if you're big into RGB. And this white set I have here is from HyperX. It's like $25. And since we have the white board, it's visually just gonna add some nice pop to it with the shine through caps. If you have the black Huntsman mini, you can then go and pick up the black pudding version of these as well. So while this isn't a mod for, you know, performance really, this one is more so just for the looks. Also on the look side of things, since we have a USB-C port on the back, you can pick up a custom coiled cable for it. The white one I've showed off is from Tez Cables, I'll drop it down below, as well as a link to Space Cables, which is the company I often, you know, show different cables off on the channel. Tons of different colors, looks really great. Again, another nice visual touch. And then lastly, this really isn't a modification, but more so a suggestion. And that's gonna be to use this with an extended mouse pad. Because with this keyboard on top, that layer of the mouse pad is also gonna help sort of absorb the vibration from it resonating on your desktop obviously depending on what material your desk is made of, but it'll help kind of cut that down and absorb it when you're typing or gaming. Again, suggestion, but it will help in a sound test. Speaking of which, now's the time. We're gonna do a sound test of the new keyboard with the modifications versus how it comes stock. So back to back so you can hear the difference. Damn. So this sounds just miles better than the new and improved, you know, linear switches we have with the Huntsman Mini, because they already have those silicone dampeners. But now when you add that internal dampening foam with the EVA foam, just having that layer now absorb all the, the vibrations and the resonance and stuff when you're typing or gaming, it is definitely worth it to do. Just even that alone is gonna make a huge difference. Dampening foam all the way. And Razer, if you're listening, hopefully you are, Maybe that could be a good suggestion to add to future keyboards. I know Durgod does it in a lot of theirs. So again, you already added the internal um, silicone dampeners in the switches. Why not do it to the keyboards as well? Because you hear the difference. It sounds so, so much better. And it's funny because you look at the, the Huntsman Tournament Edition versus the stock Huntsman Mini, that sounds night and day. And now you compare the, the improved Huntsman Mini to the modded version, 
and that's night and day as well. So good stuff all across the board. Yes, it still does slightly have that like rattlesnake sound when you, eh, not, not too much. Not too much. I know usually when people shake these, it does have a bit of a rattly sound, but again, with that dampener on the bottom, um, it's not really giving much room for the switches to move inside, so it does dampen that a little bit. Uh, but again, this isn't a shake weight. No one's actually gonna do that in real life. It's just not necessary. And um, I think just it was definitely worth it. Not so much a WD-40. You could probably skip that, but in terms of sound, EVA foam all the way. If you wanna check any of it out, I'll have it listed for you in the description down below. Good luck, don't break your board. I'm not responsible if you do. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed, have a good day.